So what did we say? What did we say about intimacy? Intimacy means I have more and more shared identity. I have mutuality of recognition. I have mutuality of pathos. I have mutuality of value. And I have mutuality of purpose. So to be intimate with myself means I have to have a wider and wider identity within myself, right? So intimacy equals shared identity. So unique self is, and what we're going to about to call in a second the five selves, is an expression of the intimacy formula. Because what is it? It's a wider and wider shared identity with myself, right? So what the great interior sciences realized was that if you say I'm a separate self, which is how virtually all of reality describes themselves, and when James described taking a trip and meeting people in their egocentric selves, right, right, he's describing right, a world in which people are in my separate self because that's who I am. And in fact, that's what Western consciousness teaches us about our identity. That's the answer to the question of who. So the answer, the simple first principle answer given by society to the question of who, which is going to be an organizing first principle, is that who I am is a separate self. That's who I am. And, and actually, to not know that's to be somewhat insane. It's actually on the DSM, which is right, the, the diagnosis of insanity, the DSM in, in, in part of the Western world. So not to know that I'm a separate self is psychiatrically considered right, an expression right, of pathology. But the interior sciences knew that that wasn't enough. And the interior sciences are matched by the exterior sciences. If David Bohm, Einstein's sometimes student, knew anything, he knew about wholeness. And Einstein writes, and lots of Einstein quotes that are, he didn't say, this one and lots of things he got wrong outside of science, but he got this one right, which is the notion right, of being right, essentially a separate self, Einstein writes, is an optical delusion of consciousness. It's an optical delusion of consciousness. And that actually, actually, the interior sciences understood that I actually have to awaken from the torporitic slumber, right, of experiencing myself as a separate self. And I have to realize that actually if I experience myself as a separate self, I experience myself essentially as a puzzle piece. I'm a puzzle piece. Ever, ever seen a puzzle piece? I'm a puzzle piece. Only thing is, there's no puzzle. <laughs> That's a bad feeling, just to be clear. I'm a puzzle piece. I know I'm a puzzle piece. Right now, you ever seen a puzzle piece? Try and walk as a puzzle piece. Right, right, right. Hard to walk. Right. But what's even worse is, besides being hard to walk, and you look a little fucking weird. Right. Puzzle pieces just look weird, just to be clear. So what you try and do is you try and cover up the weirdness, fill in those little weird holes, right? And then you desperately look for the puzzle, right? But then they tell you there is no fucking puzzle. And if you challenge that, you're diagnosable on the DSM. Wow. That's intense for answering the question of who in simple first values and first principles. So the interior scientists come along and say, in lots of different versions, I'm not merely a separate self. My truer being is that I'm actually inseparable from the field of awareness. That's a great first step. And that's absolutely true. I am inseparable from the field of consciousness. There's no separation. And there's lots of jokes about it, right? Zen, hot dog, make me one with everything. We got it, right? But there's a whole literature and there's a whole set of technologies of practices, 
right, that actually allow myself to access that realization. And you're all familiar with that, right? And everyone here has got, had some access or some practice in that, and, and that's insanely important. And it's actually the beginning of sanity, right? Because actually enlightenment, if you had to say enlightenment in three words, enlightenment is sanity. That's it. That's all it is is sanity. The great three words. Enlightenment is sanity. And sanity is knowing who I am, right? So if I think I'm, I don't know, Prince Harry. I'm Prince Harry. A little mad at Andrew, motherfucker, right? But, you know, I'm Prince Harry, right? No, no, Marin, don't look at me with that strange look. I am Prince Harry. Sweetie, have I lied to you in all these years? Really? No, really. Like, I got a hair thing. I know, I got a hair thing, right? But, but, but I'm really Prince Harry. Right, right? I'm, really? Really? Do you like my wife? Kate, she's awesome, isn't she? Yeah. Now, if I could go on for an hour like that, and the end you realized, oh, my fucking God, he really thinks he's Prince Harry. Right? He's insane. Right? So that's a minor insanity. That's nothing. That minor little difference, couple of guys, whatever. But to think that I'm a separate self, that that's the exhausts my identity, is utter insanity. So the movement from separate self to true self is sanity. The only thing is, now let's go really close now, it's crazy making. And that's why Claire started a Unique Self Institute. Let's go slow. So the experience of being a separate self is the experience of being a puzzle piece. Fair? I'm a puzzle piece. Looking for the puzzle? No puzzle. How does that make me feel? Crazy! It's insane making. Does everyone get that? That's insane making. I can't quite walk. I look weird. I'm trying to cover up the holes, and I can't find the puzzle, and they tell me it's not there, and I can't understand why I have this inconsolable yearning for a puzzle. Right? Fish don't yearn for dry land. And I yearn for a puzzle that doesn't exist. I'm fucking crazy. So, so the, the, the Western experience of separate self it creates insanity, creates pathology, which we then medicate. Right? Right? It's, a, it's a, such a vicious circle. That when I'm going to stop myself internally from going into a rabbit hole about how that works. So now I'm true self. But what's true self? That's the problem. So true self is not, it's not a puzzle piece. True self is the whole puzzle. I'm going to look at the puzzle. There's lines between the pieces in the puzzle. You see those lines between the pieces in the puzzle? Ha! Huh. Your teacher says that's an illusion. Lines between pieces of the puzzle? There's just the whole puzzle. There's just the one, but no, no. But there's lines separating the pieces. No, no, no. Sit on your cushion. Meditate. No, 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 but I'm telling you, I, I, I see. So actually, the teaching of true self is just as crazy making in and of itself as unique self is. Excuse me, as separate self is. Right? Because separate self is crazy making because I'm a puzzle piece looking for a puzzle, but true self says the only ontological reality right, is the absolute. I have a friend who I do dialogues with, right, who called his organization for many years, was the most significant American expression of true self. He called it the Impersonal Enlightenment Fellowship. The Impersonal Enlightenment Fellowship. Because the point is, separate self is personality. It's personal. i got to get beyond the personal into the impersonal, into the field of awareness, right? It's the field of awareness. And all of the major teachers in Europe and the United States today still teach some version of the same thing. Right? You've got to actually get to impersonal enlightenment. And those are my early conversations right? Right? in the inner world as well, which has basically adopted that Buddhist position. But it's everywhere. It's, it's what's taught in enlightenment teachings all over the world till today. Right? Right? You've got to move beyond the personal, 
move beyond the story as part of the impersonal and identify with, right, the impersonal, which is the field of awareness. The only problem with that is there's lines between the puzzle. That's an illusion. Well, it's not an illusion. Actually, I can feel them. And it's completely insane making to tell me that those are actually just expressions of separate self. And then you begin to actually come alive. And you realize, oh, oh, beyond true self, there's actually a higher individuation beyond ego. Ego is separate self. There's a higher individuation. I'm not just true self. And true self itself, stay close, is not just the field of awareness. Neither of those are true. True self is not the field of awareness. That's not true. It's not the field of consciousness. That's not true. Right? It's the field of consciousness and desire. It's the field of allured interconnectivity. It's the field of intimacy. And all intimacies are expressed by unique nodes interfacing on the system. So actually, I'm not true self. I'm a unique expression of the field of true self. And the field of true self is the field of eros. And consciousness is another word of eros. It's actually the field of value, right? right? And, and Buddhistic metaphysics that go relativistic completely misunderstand true self. True self is the field of eros and value, right? And awareness, and awareness of awareness, is an expression of eros and value. I'm a unique configuration of value, of eros. I'm not true self. I'm one with consciousness. Just feel, you can feel truth in your body. How does it feel like to be one with awareness? It's okay. You can sink into it, and it's beautiful, but that's not what you're sinking into. When you actually sink into real true self meditation, you're filled with eros. You're filled with aliveness, right? You're not just filled with awareness. You're filled with the sense of the ground of being and the eros of being, and you can actually rest in it, and it fills you up, and it fills you up uniquely because actually there's a seamless code of the universe, true self, but the code of the universe is seamless, but it's not featureless, and its unique, distinct feature is actually me and you. So my unique self is not my separate self. My unique self is the unique configuration of eros, intimacy, and desire that incarnates and individuates in me, as me, and through me that never was, is, or will be ever again other than through me. And God, or reality, has an experience of shocking self-recognition when looking in my eyes. Cha, there I am, Kirsten. Oh, that's what infinity desired, infinitude. So I can tell something completely wild, right? And do not tell anyone that I told you. So please, there's a set of mystical texts which you can find in Sanskrit, you can find in Aramaic. They're never translated, right? Which understand all of reality as divine Shashua, which is. God making love to herself himself in order to have more godness. But that more godness is you. It's Eveline. Right? It's Colin. It's Shahati. It's like wild. So she, he, it, the infinity of intimacy, the infinite intimate desires literally you. That's what it means to be welcome in the universe. It's a, it's a shocking idea. And I want you to get it for a second so you can really get what it means. You know, you know that thing that when you go into your mind, right? What do you think about most of the time? Just between us. Let's just cut the bullshit. What do you think about most of the time? For real. Yourself. Let's just, just be honest here for a second. What do most people think about most of the time? Themselves. That's what people think about, Right? What do you think of most of the time you're thinking about yourself? One version of the other, thinking about yourself. Now, why is that because you are a flaming narcissist that I happen to wind up 
after doing this crazy mystery school, I wound up with like the 75 worst flaming narcissists in the world gathered by Claire and Schott who are always fucking thinking about themselves all the time. Isn't that a shame? We couldn't get a good group. Right? It works that way sometimes. You guys, come on. What are you thinking about yourself all the time? Right? You narcissistic. No. And so enlightenment tells you, no, you're thinking about yourself all the time. You're stuck in a separate self. Right? Just, just imagine this for a second. Imagine this for a second. Right? The other thing that you're always thinking about, if you're privileged in the world, is your beloved. If you actually get to fall in love, and it could be a friend, it could be the person who's your, your public partner, or it could be the person who you're working with, or who's this wonderful colleague, Right? There's, our love lists are too short. I'm talking about, not talking about sexual beloved. Right? That's a whole other conversation. I'm talking about real beloved, outrageous beloved, outrageous love. Do you think about your beloved all the time? So why are you actually thinking about yourself all the time? Not because you're a narcissist at all. Because you're eavesdropping on the divine conversation that's always thinking about you. Wow. I, that actually brings tears to my eyes just to even feel it. Right? Right? You're actually eavesdropping on the divine conversation that's thinking all the time about you. It's actually shocking. It, cha it, it all changes. I'm not thinking about myself because this is some sort of, right, I'm on the savanna, and if only I think about myself all the time, I'll survive. Even that misunderstands survival. Survival means, why do I want to survive? When I read evolutionary psychology, which I do regularly, right, and it's got some important insights, obviously, but it's just like the, the hidden cognitive distortions are shocking. So they'll take some incredibly important human dimension, and they'll say, that's just a survival drive. But what does survival mean? You just gave it a word, survival, it's a bad word. What does it mean to survive? I wanna live, <laughs> right? Life, <laughs> survival's life, and I want my unique life to perpetuate itself. Unique self. It's not a separate self-productive materialist program of the system, it's a telos. There's an inherent drive that I wanna perpetuate my unique life, of course. So I'm thinking about myself all the time because I want to fulfill life because the current of the life force inside of me, uniquely individuated in me, as me, and through me, understands that I am the shocking self-recognition of eternity itself. Wow. So I'm thinking about myself all the time because I'm eavesdropping right, on a conversation of infinity because finitude has the capacity to eavesdrop on infinity. Wow. Right? I'm like, wow. Right? And all of a sudden, I'm welcome in the universe. Do you understand how insanely destructive it is to teach that the reason I'm thinking about myself all the time is because I'm trapped in a narcissistic right, loop and I can't get out of it? I'm essentially teaching that everyone's broken and you can't be fixed because you're never going to change that. What's that a recipe for? Shame. That's what shame means. I'm broken. You see how it all begins to fit together? Shame means I'm broken and I can't be fixed. So teaching that my experience, right, of my uniquely individuated self is an expression of my separation before I've realized my enlightenment is the ultimate shaming proposition. Wow. Wow. Right? I mean, it's, it's actually shocking. Right? So in, in, infinity desires finitude. Infinitude eavesdrops on that desire, and that desire is unique. It's not a meta desire. Infinity desires Colleen. Infinity desires Jacqueline, who's in her room now, with COVID, right? Who's just this huge rock star and who's listening and infinite desires every single person who's online, 
right, from around the world. And I got a couple of emails yesterday that you guys want to upline, up-level the online experience next year, and I'm totally great. And Jamie, thank you for your email. And we'll, and we'll do that. And those suggestions, Jamie, every single one of them was completely right. And, and Infinity Desires, right, Inika, right, who Paul went back to kind of to be with. Where is Paul? Is Paul here? Right? 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 So I got a beautiful email from, from Inika, right, last night. But, but in other words, Infinity Desires, right, the unique expression. And Infinity's giving an answer, right, implicit in the structure of the cosmos to the question of who are you. Let's put it all together. Who are you? You are an irreducibly unique expression of the love intelligence, the universal love story. You're an irreducibly unique expression of the love desire, right? Infinity desiring finitude. You're an irreducibly unique expression of the love beauty, right? Who are you? You're an irreducibly unique expression of the love intelligence and the love desire and the love beauty that is, watch each sentence, the initiating and animating eros and value of all that is that lives in you, as you, and through you, that never was, is, or will be ever again other than through you. And as such, not only do you have a unique perspective, you have a unique quality of intimacy. And your unique perspective and your unique quality of intimacy come together to foster your unique gift that is absolutely needed by all that is and that can be provided singularly and only by you. And giving that unique gift becomes not told you by any guru or any teacher or any religion. It's the inherent categorical imperative of your life is to live that unique self and to give that unique gift which addresses a unique need, right? Because reality needs, because infinity desires, infinity needs, addresses a unique need in your unique circle of intimacy and influence because your unique circle of intimacy and influence is not coincidental, right? It's actually webbed by the allurement of cosmos, right, which birthed you in this time. And you think you're such a powerful separate self. Well, who decided where you should be born? Oh, you did. No, I don't think so. Who decided when you should be born? No, you did. I don't, I don't think so. Who decided which structure of society you should be born into? You did. I don't think so. Who desired, right, right, what DNA code structure you should have? You did. I don't think so. Separate self, huh? Right, you're being lived. I'm being lived by a web of allurements. So I have a unique gift to give to my unique circle of empathy and influence that can be given Right? Only by myself. And when I realize that's true, and I locate my unique self in the context of that allured web story, right? the evolution of intimacy that lives in me, as me, and through me, I'm not just unique self. I actually awaken more intimately to the entire evolutionary process as conscious evolution. And I'm evolutionary unique self. And I realize that I'm made up of atoms of music. And I begin to play my instrument, I begin to play my instrument in the unique self-symphony, and I begin to experience myself not merely as homo sapien, but as homo amor. Because homo amor is the universe, colon, a love story in person. Cha. Right? That's an answer to the question of who. Right? Now, you might say, okay, let's get the... Uh, the Walter voice on the table. How are we going to explain that to everyone? How did we explain democracy to everyone? A thousand years ago, democracy did not exist as a structure of cosmos. It's a far more complex idea to explain in terms of governance, right? And yet, every eight-year-old in the world has some sense of democracy today. And we all felt the violation of value on the first day when we explained how democracy is being undermined by split testing in the techplex. Because we actually understand, demo we understand democracy and we understand it. Right? This, we can communicate right, this notion of unique self, which is the source code notion together with Eros of Homo Amor. We have to communicate it in every language, at every level of complexity. We have to communicate it academically as unique self theory. We have to communicate it in popular writing. We have to communicate it in movies. We have to communicate it in rock operas. The right? first walk we took was about a rock opera. But imagine a rock opera on Homo Amor, right? Homo Amor rock opera, right? We need all of it 
because that's how you create culture. So we've got to create a culture of eros, the core of which is unique self and unique self symphony. But it's all one story. Cha. <laughs>